Hi there, it's Kathy Cates and Melissa Hines from the Institute for Pelvic Health. And you're watching Demystifying the Pelvic Floor, weekly videos providing real and simplified pelvic floor education for real clinical situations. We've got you covered. And today we're gonna to be talking about endometriosis and pelvic floor. So endometriosis is multifactorial and needs a collaborative team approach. So NPs are the perfect people to do that. So we have some questions that can help you to guide your HPI. So you wanna ask when you're talking about, asking about menstrual questions, you wanna ask about dysmenorrhea, menorrhagia, have they ever been able to insert a tampon or a menstrual cup? In regard to sexual questions, you wanna ask about are they able to have penetrative sexual activity without pain? And you wanna ask about sexual activity or anything inside the vagina or rectum and is there pain? Um, you also wanna separate from penetrative activities, you wanna ask about do you have pelvic pain, rectal pain, abdominal pain, back pain, gluteal pain, and does that pain radiate? You also wanna ask about their bowels and their bowel habits because you see a lot of patients with endometriosis that have very mixed type of bowel symptoms between diarrhea, constipation. So you really wanna get a good history with that. And you wanna ask if their bowel symptoms are worse when they have their period. Mm -hmm. And then you wanna take a deep dive into their diet. And you wanna really ask about inflammatory foods because we know that with those, if you have a diet that's high in inflammatory foods, you're really gonna kick off that inflammatory cascade. All right, so for management of endometriosis, the only way that endo can be diagnosed is by a laparoscopic wide field excision done by a gynecologist. So, there's a great resource that we've listed here, nancysnookendo.com, and they can help you to find surgeons that do this kind of procedure. So you don't have to worry about like searching around for a GYN that does it, go to this website, have your patients go to this website and you'll find someone that can help with that. Which is different than the ablation procedure. Totally. Ablation is old school. Thank you, Melissa. And, uh, all we know that all the ablation does is it's just going to shear off the actual endo implant, but the wide field excision, and this is kind of cool. I went to go observe one with one of my lovely GYN colleagues here in Boston, and they literally go in and lift off the whole tissue off of the peritoneal cavity where they, or where, or off of the uterus or off of the organ where they find the endo. So they literally like just think about like you're lifting off the skin off of maybe like when you're peeling apples to make applesauce or something like that. And you're peeling off that skin, they're lifting off the skin with the implant intact. So they're taking the whole thing off. And this is now like the gold standard to diagnose endo. The ablation, you can go in and note that there's endo and shear it off. But this is really where, where we're headed is this wide field excision. So things that we can do in the office for the medical management, we can treat the symptoms and understand that it's not gonna get to the root cause of the actual endometriosis. We can try combined oral contraceptives. We can try Lupron or Orlissa. We can try a hormonal IUD and knowing that hormonal IUDs can often really work well for and better actually for adeno pain. So it's just something to consider. All right, so some conservative management of endometriosis is um, pelvic floor therapy. A lot of times with the endometrial implants, it creates torsions in the uterus and wherever it's located. Um, and it can create this pulling of the uterus to one side versus the other, which can create shortening on one side, elongation on the other side, pretty much tightness. Um, so really good to have 
a pelvic floor therapist evaluate someone with endometriosis because it can really help with the symptoms from trigger points in the abdominal area, suprapubic region to internal trigger points. Um, helps to downregulate. We work on the mind-body connection with some diaphragmatic breathing um, and relaxation um, and general pelvic alignment too. So a lot of times these people, because they've had so much pain, they'll do a lot of guarding or they'll, you know, compress forward because they're in so much pain around their cycle. Um, and that creates a lot of tension in the abdomen and in the pelvic floor. A lot of times they don't want to breathe into their pelvic floor, into their low belly because they're muscle guarding against it because things are so painful. So it's really retraining how to relax your pelvic floor um, and how to release your abdominal area, your lower back, and just your pelvis in general. Really helpful. Um, healing the gut is another important um, thing to do. And important that NPs play a crucial role in assembling this care team. So you are you may not be the one telling them, you know, FODMAP diet, eliminate wheat, dairy, soy, corn, all the high allergy foods, but getting them with a provider that really specializes in this to help them figure out what diet works best, what foods may be triggering their symptoms. Um, so having someone that you really trust and can refer to is really important because we're finding with all the research that endometriosis is more an inflammatory issue um, than a GYN or hormonal issue. So inflammation starts in the gut, so treat the gut. Um, another important thing is lowering toxin um, exposure, especially dioxins, which are found in um, like meats um, and a lot of foods, non-organic foods. Um, cleaning products, um, beauty products, you'd be surprised. EWG.org is a great resource where you can plug in your products and see how toxic they are. Um, so that's a nice resource to hand over to your patients as well. And I want to really encourage all of us nurse practitioners, you can be the person that starts to plant the seed about the diet, about the pelvic floor, all these kinds of things. We just want to empower you. Your patients love you. Like everyone loves their nurse practitioner. So just start planting these seeds and really help your patient just get this care team, get this beautiful like wraparound hug that they need to really be able, endo's hard, it's complicated. And so this is where we can really help. And Melissa and I are so excited because there's a new study that just came out. It's a prospective study in the journal Ultrasound in Obstetrics and Gynecology. And they found that women treated with pelvic floor physiotherapy showed, or pelvic floor therapy, showed a significant improvement in pelvic floor relaxation, superficial dyspareunia, and chronic pelvic pain in comparison to women who did not receive treatment. So even if you take from this that when your patient comes in and you think they may have endo and you've talked with them about diaphragmatic breathing and made a referral to a pelvic floor specialist, you've helped them so, so much. So true. All right. And that's a wrap. Did you like this video? If so, hit like and subscribe. Please share with your colleagues and comment below to let us know your biggest challenges in providing care for your patients who you think might have endometriosis. And subscribe to our email list at instituteforpelvichealth.com to get your free guide for tips for managing that, that challenging pelvic exam. You'll get access to our weekly pelvic health content. And be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we'll, we'll post more pelvic health tips. We're super excited to announce that we're developing an online pelvic health course for nurse practitioners. Our course will break down the pelvic floor so that you can confidently care for your patients with pelvic floor dysfunction. By simplifying the pelvic floor, we'll improve patient outcomes and your provider experience. Thanks for watching and spreading the word. Let's revolutionize pelvic health. We'll see you soon.